Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com with Andre, the most beautiful little ferret and the most wonderful son in the whole world. He's giving me kisses, he's giving me kisses. <laughs> um, this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep number 64 I think so the idea behind this apart from letting you enjoy my squeaky chair which I will hopefully yeah what I'll do is I will edit the video before I, I upload it so that the squeaky the beginning and the end of the squeakiness is gone that makes sense I can't believe he's just lying there sleeping I love it when he does that he doesn't do it very often but it's nice nice for me I think it's nice for people watching as well because he's got a bit of a little fan base and he's uh he's so beautiful and some of you that have been watching my videos you know for the last however many years you've seen him grow up you've seen him be go from a little baby to a, a little boy to a like an adolescent and now he's fully grown there was a time when he was absolutely tiny could fit in my hand and I could get my fingers around his neck like that and you know without obviously hurting him but just that's how little he was so the reason I'm doing this particular session is because it's a request from uh, a lady from Germany called Sebastian and she asked me if I would do a, a let me boy to sleep but talking about Christmases previous Christmases that I have experienced so I thought why not why not do that so before we continue please only listen to this or watch this video when you can safely close your eyes because hopefully or being well you will find it incredibly boring that's the the main objective of this is for you to be bored so so where do I start Christmas 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 my first memory of Christmas really was probably when I was about seven, eight, not eight, nine, maybe ten maybe 11 kind of that's probably about the age can't really remember much, you know, much Christmases before that there was a period of time where I lived with my three brothers and parents a dad and stepmom and you know Christmases were pretty much the same they, they were lovely but they were kind of uh, in a sense they'd kind of mix together they'd sort of mingle together into one because they're very you know just the decorations and Christmassy stuff and you know kind of you know kind of mixed together I, think if, I hope that makes sense not in a bad way just in a in a memory way 
I think one of the things that I remember, I remember the some of the presents that I got for Christmas was I got a telescope one year and it was a Tasco I think it was Tasco telescope and it was white with but the the ends were black so the it had so it had a cap on the end which you needed to take off in order to see anything I discovered after about two weeks of trying to use it it's not working dad it's not working I can't see anything I'm looking at the sky and it's just black and it, it's it say that's because it's night time son I said no but I want to look at the moon and he said well I don't look out the window the moon's there I said yeah but I want to look at the moon through the telescope he said, well, look through the telescope then. I said, but I can't see the moon. He said, well, if you direct it out of the window, look out of the window, you might be able to see it. I said, yeah, but even when I do that, it's, it doesn't, nothing. And eventually we discovered that the cap was on, you know, the, the black caps that was protecting, I guess, the, um, the other end of the telescope. And I had a bunch of lenses, uh, different lenses. One was you look straight through it, and they, you, you looked through all of them. But one was where you looked down, and because with telescopes, it's kind of like a mirror. Well, it's not quite; it is a mirror inside. So I think things, if I remember rightly things were upside down I think but it's it's been a while it's a long time ago and so I had this telescope I discovered a few things I also had a sun filter so I could look at the sun through this filter thing which was quite cool um, again you need to take the cap off the end for that to work as well you know um, what I noticed is I used to focus the telescope on the moon and just in the time it took me to get out of my clothes and into my pyjamas the moon had moved or the telescope had moved one of them or both at the same time but I, I, I put it down to the moon because you know I was studying uh, astronomy uh, well astrology to start with and then then I got corrected and so well, that's a different thing I said but it's got stars yeah it has Jason they patted me on the head and sent me to bed but eventually I started reading astronomy books and it's one of those situations and I've done this a few times in my life where I was reading books and I, <laughs> I had no idea what I was reading apart from books that I was bought that were bought for me for Christmas um, I used to rent you know get books out of the library and I'd read them and they have lovely pictures and they smelt nice and I'd be sitting there and I'd just for hours reading them and I didn't know what I was reading I didn't understand really hardly any of it but there was something about wanting to learn things that were I never found it very interesting to learn something that was easy it's for it was more of a challenge to try and learn something that was uh, you know fairly complicated and fairly perhaps specialized so I did learn a bit along the way but I still couldn't tell you now you know much about it because I stopped reading those books a long time ago 
what was strange is I actually lost a little bit of interest in astronomy but because my dad had bought me that telescope and it's a really good tele telescope and every birthday and Christmas for a few years I'd, I'd get stuff about astronomy and I just I didn't have the heart to say that I wasn't really interested in it um, anymore but I was for a while I preferred watching Doctor Who. I do remember that once. I remember being called downstairs saying, Jason, uh, Jason. I think I'd have heard if they'd have like shouted a bit louder, but Jason. And I said, Yes, it is I. What do you wish to contact me for? I said, Doctor Who's starting. And I thought, oh. So I used to go downstairs and watch Doctor Who. And I'd forget all about space and <laughs> and stuff like that while I was watching a program that was based on space travel. Oh, I've got an itchy neck. So that was one of the presents I got. So it was a really, really cool present. What other presents did I get for Christmas? When I was a child. Um, I'm just trying to think. I remember I got a present from my stepmom and there was a card on the front of it saying thank you for looking after your little brother you know for the last six months because she'd started working part time which meant I was coming home from school and looking after him until uh, she got home from work so I was looking after him for a couple of hours every night and all the way through holidays as well, all day during the holidays. So I opened it up and it was a calculator. You heard right, a calculator. I can't imagine any situation where a calculator would be a present. That's right, you heard right, a calculator. That was the uh, thank, thank, thanking gift for... No, you, you did hear right, it was a calculator. So yeah, that was... Um... Yeah, I should move on from that really, shouldn't I? I should let it go, but... Yeah... I should stop moving around in this chair because it's squeaky and I know it can be a little bit alarming not alarming but you know there must be a way of de-squeaking this thing is that DH42 or is it some kind of uh, spray that you can get that can uh, de-squeak things so I might look possibly possibly my dad told me this years ago um, polish you know like table polish spray polish that you can use for dusting and stuff if you spray that on hinges of doors or door hinges the hinges that are connected the doors to the uh, door frame it de-squeaks them and it also doesn't leave a mess like oil does doesn't leave a, a well oil stains and stuff like that so maybe if I put the chair upside down and sprayed because I've got some uh, 
I've got some spray somewhere. I think it's in the cupboard in the bathroom. So I could maybe do that and spray that on here because I made a video last week or the week before and somebody sort of said that they listened to it and then right at the end I guess I must have sat up to turn the video off or the audio off and it was a big loud squeak so I, I edited it I edited the audio uh, to take that out but I hadn't done it beforehand and uh, I suppose I forget because I'm not asleep um, when I'm doing these because it'd be quite difficult to do it and be asleep I think that maybe I sometimes forget why or what I'm doing it for or who I'm doing it for or you know I just get maybe caught up in the moment and just you know just talk about stuff you know but because this was this particular let me bore you to sleep was requested from um, Mrs. Sebastian uh, in Germany she's an elderly lady probably about in her early 90s and um, she was uh, apparently she's the first I think she was a, an Olympic gymnast uh, when she was younger but uh, lost a gold medal when I found out that she was a man I, th I, I think something like that happened anyway um, I what other Christmases I've had I remember we used to have a lot of Christmas decorations I mean, really, you know, my dad has always been, he's always loved Christmas, and even now, you know, he's always um, gone all out with Christmas decorations and uh, Christmas dinners and stuff like that. He's very Christmassy. And um, my first stepmom was as well, and so is my second stepmom. But I haven't really carried on that tradition myself because I've always lived on my own pretty much since the age of 16. There's been times when I've I stayed with my dad a couple of times in my earlier years for short periods of time but I've basically spent, I've lived on my own in shared houses, in a room, you know, and I never really bothered with the whole decorating part of things although I think I did once decorate my room once but I can't remember when it was it might be when I had a flat because I had a flat when I was working at a chip shop when I first left school so I left school in 1986 and the I left school at April in April because that was the legal time that I could stop but I had to go back to school uh, in I think May June time to take my exams and uh, I got myself a job so I was 15 so I didn't turn 16 until the end of August so I was 15 years old and I got myself a job working in a chip shop and the after living there I 
think it was uh, I ended up living yeah I lived for my dad and his second wife and then I ended up living with his second wife or my stepmom and her mother and my little brother in my step grandmother's flat but I was sleeping in the living room on a like makeshift bed thing like one of those fold up beds metal things so I was it wasn't I suppose technically I was homeless but you know uh, probably at the time I didn't really see it like that because I was with family but um, I didn't have my own room and uh, my little brother was sleeping in bed with my stepmom he was only little so they, they didn't he didn't even have his own room so it's uh, it wasn't ideal but in the end they moved away so in the, I think it was April time, it was around Easter 1987, I moved into a flat above the shop, above the chip shop. And so that was my first home of mine. But it wasn't really mine in a sense, if you if you know what I mean. It was uh, I wasn't the I, the front door wasn't just mine, so it was used by the staff. Uh, they could go upstairs. There was a storage room up there because my boss and his wife and children used to live upstairs, and then they bought a house. And then they agreed for me to move up there because I was gonna, I didn't have anywhere to live. So I moved up there. But they had a storage room, so they had to always have access to get in and out. And so I had a living room, I had a bedroom, a kitchen and a bathroom. But then I had to also share the bathroom with customers if anybody wanted to use a toilet because that's when the rules came in where if you served food like a restaurant which they did have you have to provide a, a bathroom a toilet for people which is so it kind of didn't really feel like my own home because there was always strangers might come in and um, but I think I think I think I think that I did some decoration the first year I was there put some decorations up but I might not have done I can't remember I have very vague memories of my time there I remember I remember going in because you'd go out of the back door of the chip shop and the front door to my front door is directly to the left and then there's stairs and there'd usually perhaps be some things connected I think the yeah I think there was like a coat hanger where staff would put their coats and things like that maybe I, I've, I kind of vaguely remember but there's be stairs and go up the stairs and turn right would be go straight ahead that would be the bathroom with a bath and turn right would be the kitchen and then turn left and there was like a banister like a stairs banister that went round so the bedroom was on if you turn left the bedroom is just on the right and the living room was just straight ahead but then on the left hand side that was where the storage room was so I never had I think they had an office up there so I never went didn't go in there because it was locked I had no reason to go in there so I had the living room and didn't really have much in the way of furniture and I had a bed 
hat or wardrobe set of drawers just basically stuff from my childhood bedroom which had been put in storage so I just had that in my flat and I think my friends my, one of my friends Neil his parents gave me quite a few bits uh, like kitchen things like cutlery maybe saucepans and my nan gave me a few bits as well uh, for the kitchen uh, I think she gave me an ironing board and I said to her but what am I supposed to do with that she said well, you iron things iron what my shirts I said I work in a chip shop she said you still got to wear clothes I said yeah but uh, it's just at that time everything smelled of fish it was it was uh, it's quite hard to get away from the the smell of fish or chips or both but for a while I actually I know this isn't really Christmas related but I had a friend who worked there he was there part time but he was one of these really fashionable people you know super fashionable he was still at school I think but like near the end of his school school year near the end of his period of school so he took me to town to a different town and took me shopping because I didn't have the first idea about fashion or where to buy decent clothes and he took me shopping it was a really nice thing actually that he did and he introduced me to a couple of the shops that he went to and they were really really nice so I, I did I bought some really nice shoes and some a few just a few bits of nice clothing so that I could uh, you know go out or have some clothes when I went out so that was quite good but that was uh, that was when I was earning some money but then in the September I went on to this youth training scheme you can google it if you want it's the YTS they called it and it was tiny tiny bit of money it was like a kind of like an apprenticeship so if I'd have been doing a trade like maybe learning to be a bricklayer or a builder or a welder or an electrician something like that then it would have been worth the the sacrifice of earning a small amount of money because at the end of the training I would have been earning good money but that you know working in a chip shop unless I was going to own the chip shop there was never really going to be any money in it for me which is okay I didn't really bother at the time it didn't worry me so Christmas once I left home or well left home once I didn't have a home and I was living on my own I didn't really celebrate Christmas really again I've not really ever celebrated it not really I have been with people at Christmas so I spent Christmas with my dad uh, and his you know my stepmom a few times quite a few times over the years but I've also spent a lot of times where I've been just you know on my own at Christmas which I'm used to which doesn't it doesn't bother me at all because it's I just I like the I might have mentioned this before but I like Christmas morning and going out and seeing nobody especially when I lived in London and you know it was always busy but Christmas not a sound it was lovely it was just 
just standing there in the road and again I don't advise standing in the road to anyone but it was there was nothing no traffic everyone was at home I guess eating their Christmas pud or whatever people do and I do remember once I was about um, 13 maybe 12 and I wanted a bike for Christmas because I, I did a paper round I did probably a couple of paper rounds and or paper route you might call it where you are and it was a long a long journey walking because the the paper round that I did was the morning I did a morning one and an evening one and I also did yeah I did a, a couple of yeah I did a couple of leaflet rounds as well where I did them either every two weeks or once a month so they that was quite a but they was like 30, 40, 50,000 so it was a lot of them but with the the daily ones early morning and evening was Monday to Saturday didn't do Sunday rounds because those newspapers were full of magazines I did my brother's Sunday round once and my shoulder took ages to recover it was just way too heavy way too heavy so having a bike was something that I really needed and I was in the bike shop looking at the bikes well I guess, I guess that was at last bit wasn't really necessary for that sentence but I could have been looking at the bicycle pumps or looking at oil in case I ever get a squeaky chair in the future so I was looking at these bikes and I thought what I'd like really is a racer because then I could get things done a lot quicker and I used to dream about it I used to you know, sit be in bed laying down and I'd dream about having a racer and having a bike that I could do my paper around and not be walking around in the rain for two hours and say like, oh wouldn't have to get up so early in the morning oh it was nice and I dream about it so I thought I'd just start looking at some of the bikes and I saw a bike with a label on it and it had my name on it can you believe it actually had my name and my address with probably sold next to it and it, was in, it wasn't outside the shop it was inside the shop and I think um, my brothers also had bikes as well I'm, I'm guessing and you know even even though I saw my name and my address I still didn't believe that I was going to get a bike that's a bit strange isn't it you'd think that would be a bit of evidence there a bit of evidence so even though I'd seen it and I kind of knew I looked forward to Christmas that morning that Christmas probably more than any other Christmas ever before or since because on one level I knew what I was getting but on another level I was hoping I was going to get what I knew I was getting because I was unsure I didn't didn't believe it till I saw it it's probably a psychological explanation for that but of course I came down and you know just to give an example of how how great my dad and my stepmom were when it came to Christmas they'd actually wrapped the presents I mean 
the, the bikes that wrapped the bikes in Christmas wrapping paper admittedly they were shaped like bikes so it was a bit of a giveaway but it was the you know my favourite present I ever got was that bike because it was something I really really wanted and it wasn't I'm not saying that I've never wanted stuff just for the sake of it but I like something that's useful and because it was going to help me to get around it was going to help me to get to school quicker and help me to get my job done you know the paper round and my friend had a bike as well so we could both ride around on our bikes and my, my best friend was called Dean and we used to spend a lot of time together outside of school uh, the weekends, evenings, you know, during the summer and we'd walk to school together and stuff like that and uh, it's pretty much the best friend I ever had in my life actually it's strange and you know, I haven't had contact with him for we kind of stopped having contact when I left school just kind of went went our separate ways he was he was much more um, in tune with what he wanted to do with his life he wanted to be a chef and he became a chef he trained and he did it I didn't have the first idea what I wanted to do the only thing I knew what I what didn't want to do is work in a chip shop but I did that for two years. So Christmases since, uh, I remember once there was, I went to my nan's for Christmas and I was living in London at the time. So this must have been maybe 92, something like that. And or 91 even, it might be 91. I'm not sure if I stayed at my nan's or stayed at my dad's, but we had the Christmas, and either it was Christmas Day or Boxing Day, but I was there, my dad was there, I think even my aunt was there, there was quite a few of us all in one room, in the living room, watching television, and the film on television was Shirley Valentine. And this is totally true what happened. Uh, so my nan's there as well. And we probably got chocolates, a big tin of chocolates, you know, quality street or something like that. Um, everyone's you know, sort of in a good, good mood and feeling good. And my nan's happy to be around her kids. And, you know, so we're watching Shirley Valentine. And there's a, there's a bit, a part of the film where Shirley Valentine, I don't know the, the term, I don't know what the exact sentence was, but she says something about uh, saying it's about the, her boyfriend, he doesn't even know where my clitoris is. And my nan said really loudly, What's a clitoris? And I had to leave the room. In fact, I think I went outside. I was laughing so much. It's, uh, because it was just so, this, I've never, to have my nan come out with something like that. And there was that like confusion thinking, well, my nan must have known something, 
you know, along about that stuff. She had five children. She must have had some kind of knowledge. But it's just, it was one of the funniest things uh, in my memory of her. Just, it just, it's very funny. But again, she was. She used to like to decorate the, her house, and her house always felt like my house because I had lived there for a year before she moved in, and I'd been visiting regularly all my life until she moved out. Probably I don't know, ten years ago, and then she went into sheltered accommodation for the remainder of her time. So that house has always it felt like my home as well. And even the smell of the house, I could still kind of sense that, uh, that comfort, that safety. And it's really it's kind of strange because when I slept over, I would sleep in um, the little room. It just had a, a single bed. But it was, the, it was a room at the front of the house and her bedroom was also at the front of the house but it was right next to the little room. And I used, to, I used to sleep in that little room when I first moved into that house. So maybe that's part of the reason but there's something about I get the best night's sleep. It's probably the safest I felt is just being in the same, that being close to my nan, being in the same house, I just felt, it's like, I guess it's an emotional safety, you know that feeling where you can just, you feel protected, you know, even though it doesn't have to be anything from outside, it all comes from within, isn't it, it's all a feeling, a feeling that we produce ourselves. I don't know if you can hear that wind. It's very windy outside today. It hasn't been very windy inside. But if I can drink enough Coke, I can sort that out. eating any chocolate for three weeks that's not really relevant to Christmas but um, this time of year I normally eat a bit more chocolate with Christmas I kind of yes especially with the, the big tins of chocolates and stuff Because I've got nobody to tell me to, you know, to uh, keep track of what I eat. I can end up eating a lot of them in the, all in one go. But when I visit my dad, he'll be there and there'll be the tin of chocolates. And my stepmom will look at him. And he stops, he stops taking them. She she put the lid on, and not hide hide the tin. That's quite funny to watch. Funny on one way, but then I can't get to them because I don't know where they are. So what other Christmases? I remember I I worked in this cold store, like factory thing. Basically, they processed frozen products. And a big old place, and I worked there in 1989. And that was the first Christmas I worked there. And I started in probably September, and then I moved, I finished probably April, uh, and then I worked somewhere else. But I gave 
everybody Christmas cards that I was working with and they looked at me as if I'd literally just brought in a donkey with a child sitting on top it like some you know I didn't have a donkey with me I'm just saying it so they looked at me like really quiz quizzically why have I given them Christmas cards and I don't know why I did that maybe maybe when I worked in a chip shop maybe we did give each other Christmas cards I don't recall because I would have been there Christmas 86 Christmas 87 and then I was left in April 88 or March 88 so maybe maybe we you know gave each other Christmas cards so maybe that's where I got the the idea from because being my first job like full time job but yeah I remember that what other things other Christmases see Sebastian she asked me to talk about previous Christmases but there isn't really much to say there's not really much and it's not supposed to be interesting is it but Christmas just what other Christmases have I had when I first moved to London I used to come um, back to my dad's at Christmas and stay there uh, when I was like for the first probably three or four five years possibly up to about 95 and then after that I think I pretty much stayed at home stayed in London and Yeah, even when I was living in, I was living with my cousin, and I stayed there for four years, and she'd be, I'd give them Christmas presents and, you know, stuff like that, but they'd be having their Christmas, and I wouldn't, I really wouldn't bother with eating with them. I'd just stay upstairs and watch telly. or sometimes what I'd do is because my friend he used to go to Ireland to be with his family so I'd look after his dog and st I'd stay at his flat over Christmas so that was quite nice to have a, a bit of a break what other Christmases oh when I was at university I stayed in this family house it was a bungalow but was it a bungalow? No, was it? it was a cottage. It wasn't a bungalow. It had stairs. So it was a cottage. And a lovely, beautiful cottage. And lovely garden and everything. So I was staying in there. I was living there for four years, I think. And, or three years. So I don't know. And when was it? I started living there in November 2007 and I moved out at the beginning of 2011 so 2007 November to November 2008 November 2009 that's two years November 2010 that's three years so it's yeah three years and maybe three months that I was living there and they had a, you know 
a big sort of Christmas dinner with the family and stuff and I didn't I think we had quite a lot of snow so I didn't um, couldn't really travel to see my dad or anything so I just stayed there and they invited me to have lunch you know Christmas dinner with them and I just didn't want to so I just didn't I don't know I just didn't feel comfortable and uh, so I, but I think she saved me some dinner and gave me and I heated it up it was lovely I should have just sat and had some dinner but just maybe I was worried that they'd want me to help with the washing up I'm not sure but it's something just just I don't know I'm not never really been good on being great on the whole celebratory part just I don't know because I got into Buddhism quite deeply in 2002 so it's didn't really celebrate Christmas you know as a religion and I still sort of I acknowledge it and give presents and stuff when I can but it's not you know I like the build up I do like the Christmas films I love Christmas carols and I love I love seeing people that look happy that look you know that's that's nice um, I don't always want to be too close to them but it's it's you know it's it's preferable isn't it to you know the opposite to that I guess but I learned something quite quite important it was back in I don't know what year it was but my dad my stepmom my second stepmom and her two children were still living with them so it's got to be quite a long time ago and I was sleeping in one of the beds I might have been yeah I was sleeping in one of the rooms and I got woken up Christmas morning by lots of laughter and uh, giggling and all this stuff and you know hard I opened my eyes I was just glad to see there was no one else in the room but I just and it's, it's, it's embarrassing really my first thought was one of kind of uh, you know how dare them wake me up how you know and then it dawned on me that actually getting woken up by people that are happy having fun and laughing laughter that's got to be the nicest way to get woken up or one of the nicest ways to be woken up so it it sort of changed my my mind changed my brain chemistry in quite a profound way um, I was able to move from being a grumpy old man to an ex, you know, accepting, you know, perhaps getting in touch with reality, the reality that my stepmom and my little sister were actually having fun on Christmas morning. And it's a beautiful thing. So yeah, I was, uh, and two of the most important females in my life were enjoying themselves. So that was, yeah, it was, it was nice. I'm trying to think of any other Christmases that are memorable. It kind of, I think is, I'm 48 now and I keep mentioning it, so I'm a bit worried that I might be becoming old. She knows that seems to be a thing with 
some of the older people keep mentioning, I'm, I'm 79, you know, but I'm doing it already and I'm only 48. If I, if I go this way, I think by the time I'm 80, that'll be the only thing I ever say. That'll be my, my answer to everything. I'm 80. I'm 80. A bit like Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, that tree. I'll be like that, but just saying, I'm 80. So what other Christmassy stories, delightful things can I talk about? Um, I do have a really funny story, but I can't tell you it. No, I do want to tell you, but I can't. It's uh, so yeah. It's uh, it's a Christmas. Hopefully, you're asleep anyway, so you're not listening, and you're calm and relaxed and enjoying, feeling loose and comfortable. And um, it's nice to be relaxed, isn't it? It's nice to have that. I don't know. I think so. It's nice to have that sense of just letting go. And being able to enjoy. Enjoy feeling comfortable, you know. There's something quite nice about being indoors at the moment. Feeling calm, feeling relaxed. I suppose one of my... I quite like the first Christmas I had here in this flat. Because... It was the first time I had my own flat, my own space where no one else had access. The first time I had a my own bedroom and a living room and a kitchen and a bathroom and a storage room and a hallway, a front door that no one else could get into. Um, no one else has got a key to, you know, it's, it's the first time I ever had this. So it's nice, it's more than, it's really great. Um, so the first Christmas here was in 2000 and, I don't know what year it was. Was it 2014? I'll have been here four years in April next year. So that's four years in 2019, which means I must have moved in here in 2015. So December 25th, 2015, I had Andre and he'd, I'd had him since September. It was just big enough to be able to, uh, for me to take him for walks and I think that first year I actually made a video Christmas Day and I filmed him and I, I bought him presents and I'd, I'd wrapped the presents up and everything and he had a great time but like a lot of the things I've deleted that video and it's gone forever but I might do one this year just to Maybe like a, a nice little live broadcast with Andre Christmas morning or Christmas afternoon and just to say hi, maybe. But I was also, that time I was drinking lager. So I was drinking 
quite regularly like in the evening and stuff and over Christmas I think I bought quite a few packs of lager you know that were in the storage room so I had a lot of them to drink but I haven't really drunk alcohol not really like properly for a couple of years now I just I don't I don't know something about lager I'm not really I've never been a a drinker of like hard hard liquor you know kind of um, like whiskey and vodka and things like that but I don't even really don't even really like lager anymore it doesn't really it doesn't do it for me I prefer a nice can of coke and some tea cakes or hot cross buns and a nice movie Yes. I'm gonna try and hold my I should try and hold my stomach in. I shouldn't have done it in this jumper. This is an old, old jumper. I wear this for comfort because it's old and worn out. But I I like it. Because I had another one which is blue. Really lovely coloured blue and it got holes in it underneath well it's got holes and uh, I gave it to Andre and he he sleeps in it he's got it over there somewhere he sleeps you know I was realising that when I film myself it's all the wrong way around what you see see that this is my right arm when you see it on the screen it looks like my left arm but that's my right arm my tattoo is on my right my right arm not my left arm so you're not actually seeing me how I actually look everything's kind of the other way around so my face is the opposite to what it should look the opposite I mean it's still going to look like me <laughs> but it's Because no one's face is exactly the same both sides generally um, I think unless uh, some chromosome issues I don't know but we're different we've got we look different on both sides same ish you know, obviously the same but slight slight differences so in real life I might actually look different to this maybe in real life I look a lot slimmer so I'm gonna go so this is Christmas when um, Mrs Sebastian asked me to you know if I do a Christmas thing talk about previous Christmases I thought you know there'd be years worth of stuff loads of stuff but in reality there's not really there wasn't really a lot to really say I could have expanded on pretty much anything but yeah it's just what I used to enjoy I still do is top of the pops on Christmas day it's usually on about one o'clock midday two o'clock something like that and it'd be the the hits from the previous year you know through 2018 and uh, it's one of my favorite things always was all through childhood top of the pops on Christmas day and uh, it used to be exciting to uh, 
you know, to find out who was going to be the Christmas number one. I used to love that. I think what we should do, we should all get together and make sure that Cliff Richard gets to number one. Or Shaken Stevens. I used to be a huge fan of Shaky back in the 80s and he was the most successful UK artist throughout the whole of the 80s Shaken Stevens check him out you got Green Door She Drives Me Crazy um, It's Raining it, it's, there's so many songs he, 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 so many so I'm going to go you take care and if I can find a way to turn this off without squeaking, I will. Otherwise, I'm just going to wait for a couple of seconds and then get up. Bye. That's too loud.